In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about some of the essential elements of photography. And those elements are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about exposure values and how all of these settings relate to each other. So, we first need to talk about what a stop is. A stop is one exposure unit, and it means that you're doubling or cutting the amount of light in half. And that refers to a single stop. And we can have a stop with regards to aperture, we can have it with regards to shutter speed and ISO. So let's consider a camera and these orange dots are the light that is ent entering the sensor or the, the lens. Here's our opening. So what we can have is, what we have now is light enters the camera like this. Okay, now we can make adjustments to that amount of light entering. Let's say we wanted to cut the amount of light in half. So our first option is to make the hole smaller. And that would be referencing the aperture, or the size of the opening. So it would act like this. Light enters, and half of it stays out, whereas the other half comes in. That's one option for decreasing the amount of light. The second option is shutter speed. We have the original opening, and instead of making a hole smaller, we just close the shutter when it's halfway done. And the third option is ISO. This is a little bit more of a fabricated and artificial setting, but in essence, it, with the original opening, we reduce, you can see that we reduce the um, sensor's sensitivity to light, but it's an artificial way to do it. So how do these relate? They relate through what, I, what we call exposure values. So let's say I have, um, we have aperture. Aperture scales usually run from about 1 or 1 1.4 all the way up to f22 and sometimes higher. And shutter speed sometimes run from about 1 2,000th or 1 4,000th of a second all the way down to um, 30 seconds in some camera cases, some cases with cameras. So <clears throat> there's some give and take relationship between these two settings. The aperture, if I'm around 1.4, I have very low amount of focus, which means um, I have very low depth of field. So 1 or 1.4, you could in theory have someone's nose in focus and their eyes are out of focus. Or uh, if you want to create uh, blurred background behind your subject, you would lose a you would use a very wide aperture, like maybe f4 and below, or f5.6 to f f1. Similarly, on the other side, if you're taking a landscape to, uh, photograph, you would like to have a very small aperture, like f22 and f16, so everything is in focus. And motion um, with the shutter speed. If you have a, if your setting is at one one thousandth, one five thousandth, or one two fiftieth, um, you are in essence stopping the motion. So you will be stopping time, and everything will look quite sharp. However, if you start to use your camera around one thirtieth, one fifteenth, or one eighth, you will see not only the blur in the subject, but you might have some blur everywhere else because you are, if you're holding your camera, you can just have some blurriness from that. So there's some give and take with both aperture and shutter speed, um, but the scale is doubling the amount of light and halving the amount of light. So from 1.4 to f2, you are taking, cutting the amount of light in half. From 2 to 2.8, same thing, cutting the amount of light in half. From f11 to f16, you are cutting the light in half. And the same thing with shutter speed, from 1, 000, 1 over 2,000 to 1 over 1,000, you are doubling the amount of light because you are doubling the amount of time that the uh, sensor, is, that the shutter is open. So one one thousandth to one five hundred doubles the time, therefore doubling the light. And you can go uh, left or right, up and down in any way you want. So let's look at this green dot. Instead, it's at 5.6 and one one thousandth of a second. Let's say that that photo it produced was way too dark but you do like the depth of field. You're taking a uh, portrait and you like the depth of field, so one option is just to move it over in the shutter speed 
and you can drop it from 1 1,000th to 1 250th. And that would increase the amount of light by four times. Two times to 500 and two times more to uh, 250. Okay, let's say now you, hike, you like the photograph, but you actually want a deeper depth of field. So you like the exposure, you want to keep the exposure consistent, but you want to change the depth of field. So what you can do is you double the amount of light and then half the amount of light. That would keep the exact same exposure, it will look exactly the same, except you might introduce a little bit more motion and you'll have a deeper depth of field. But the exposure value is the same. Let's do it again. You want to keep the same exposure value, but you want a, uh, more depth of field. So you double the light, half the light. Do it again, double the light, and half the light. And now, you are introducing motion into your, um, into your subject. You could be um, blurring the subject at this point, or you could be just having a hard time holding it still, holding your camera still. And at f16, you're, you have a very deep depth of field. So hopefully you understand uh, the exposure values. Then there's the ISO. Very similar. Let's say you're at 5.6 again and 1 25th, but instead of um, increasing the amount of light um, with aperture or shutter speed, what you can do is just increase the ISO. So you could be at ISO 100, and then you just increase it to 200, and it becomes uh, quite a bit more, uh, double the amount of light. So let's look at an example. Here's an example that I've, a photograph that I took on the Oregon coast. It's Haystack Rock. It's very, very dark. So all I did was I adjusted a few settings and I came up with this one. Debatable whether if it's too bright or too dark, but I, I, uh, I adjusted a few settings. So let's look at what I adjusted. So what I did was I had aperture f16. I wanted to keep it at f16 because of the depth of field that it creates. My shutter speed was 125th and my ISO was 100. Now because I was holding this camera I didn't want to go any further down the shutter speed. I didn't want to increase the amount of light in the shutter speed. So all I did was I increased the ISO to 400 and I created that, that effect. Next I had, here's another example, I have this shot taken in a campoon here in Jakarta um, and you can see this little square that I just put in there. The settings for this, um, I had a very very high ISO, and I'll show you what I had in a second, um, but when you introduce high ISO, you introduce noise. So there's the before, sorry, this is the after, this is the original, I had a very very high ISO, and here's the after, and you can see, hopefully, with the video, that, that there was a very uh, high amount of noise in the before than the after. So how can I compensate that? Because I do like the exposure. I like the exposure a lot, but I want to make sure that I keep the same exposure but reduce the amount of noise when you, when you uh, make the image larger. So here's my settings. F5.6 one two fiftieth of a second and ISO 3200. It was a very dark alley and so I cranked up the ISO all the way to 3200. I realized that that introduced some amount of noise so what I wanted to do is I decreased the amount of noise to 400. So I cut the light in half one, two, three times. Because I cut the light in half three times I need to add three stops of light either from aperture or shutter speed, either one. I dropped it two stops to 1 60th and one stop to uh, aperture f4 and that compensated for the three stops. Two stops from 1 to 50th and one stop from 5.6 to 4. So hopefully this helps you understand the relationship between aperture, shutter speed, and ISO.